Hello, Hub Kids. I am so happy to be here with you again today. Um, last week, we talked about, well, what do you remember? We talked about Jesus being raised from the dead because he died for us, but then he didn't stay dead. He came back to life because he is fully God, right? And fully man. What is something you remember from this passage? You can take a moment, you can pause the video, and I want you to talk about it with your family. What is one word that we talked about together? A word that showed up in the passage last week seven times. Do you remember what it was? Believe. What does believe mean? We talked about believe is when we can't prove something, but we know it's true anyway. Believe. So, do we get to see Jesus the way his disciples did? No. Remember, Jesus walked into the room and Thomas got to stick his fingers in Jesus' hand where the holes were, where the nails went. And do we get to do that? No, we don't, which I'm kind of okay with because I wouldn't want to do that if I saw Jesus because that seems kind of gross to stick your finger through somebody's hand. But that's what Thomas needed. But we don't get to do that. We don't get to see Jesus in person. But we still believe he's here because we know things that he did for us. We can read the Bible and we can feel him in our hearts. So, believe. Today, we are going to read the last chapter in John. Can you believe it? <laughs> believe. But we've been going through this book for three years, and we're finally done, and I'm super excited. I have really, really loved the book of John, and I am excited for all the things that we've learned, and I'm also excited to move on. Remember when you're reading this passage that every time Jesus, John says, the one who Jesus loved in the chapter, he's actually referring to himself. He doesn't ever call himself John. He just calls himself the one whom Jesus loved. So remember that because that'll come up. So read this video together. Pause right now. Read this video together. You can't read the video. Pause the video right now and read chapter 21 together and then practice retelling each other what you remember and what you heard and um and just spend some time remembering what that was about so here's my funny face for the day that might have been similar to a different one what are the passage the disciples doing in this passage they're fishing that seems like a pretty ordinary thing to do a little bit weird, don't you think, that after three years of following Jesus, everywhere he went, Jesus died, and then he came back and showed them that they were, he was there, and then they went back to all the things that they did beforehand, like fish. Are they having any luck while they're fishing? Nope, they're not catching anything. They are working and working and working and spending all day out there, and they're not getting anything. I've never been fishing, but I've seen people go fishing, and it seems kind of boring to me because it seems like a lot of waiting, and especially if you never catch a fish. So I'm imagining the disciples are feeling a little bit frustrated right now. And then what happens? They just hear somebody on way off on the shore say, throw your net to the other side. And what do they do? They hear his words, and they throw their net to the other side which is kind of a weird thing. If there's fish, they swim. It's probably not a huge boat, and they just, it's weird to think that there would be a bunch of fish on one side of the boat and not on the other side of the boat. And what happens? They catch a, a bunch of fish. Actually, they catch 153 fish, which is weirdly specific to put in this. And one of those little things that John throws in that makes it easier for us to believe what he's saying is true because 153 is a weird number to just make up. So Jesus is standing on the shore, and he yells to them, your way isn't working. Do it my way instead. And then it's successful. So a thing that sticks out to me in this passage is that Jesus 
what was waiting for them when they came back to the shore. He had a fire already going for the fish he knew he was, they were all going to catch. He had a pan already and a fire going with charcoal, and he had a place for them, and he provided the food. Did those fishermen do anything to catch those fish? No, it was Jesus that brought those fish into their net. So did they do anything on their own to make this dinner happen? Absolutely nothing. So they realize it's Jesus, and they come to the shore, and what was waiting for them? The fire and all the things they needed to cook the fish. And we see this over and over and over again in the Bible. God loves us so much that he takes care of us. We hear in John him say that his father, Jesus says that his father is going to prepare a place for them. We see in the Garden of Eden, all the way back in Genesis, that God takes care and he even clothes Adam and Eve when they make a mistake and are embarrassed about their nakedness. He, we, in Psalms 23, there's the promise that Jesus is going to prepare a place, a table for his people to eat. And we see in Exodus, when his people leave their slavery, what does God do? They're in the desert and they're starving and he brings water out of rocks and makes it rain bread so that they never go hungry. This is exactly what God does for his disciples here. He prepares a place and he provides the food. He brings everything. What did the disciples have to do? They had to listen and they had to obey. They had to hear Jesus say, throw the net on the other side of the boat. And even though it sounded weird and it didn't make sense, and at that point they didn't even know it was Jesus, but they listened and then they'd ob they obeyed. Jesus is offering us all of this good, wonderful food at a table, but we still have to believe that it's there for us and to go up and eat it. We just have to sit down at that table and know that he is there waiting for us and loving us and taking care of us. Jesus shows us this in his death. Did any of us die to save ourselves? No. Can we earn enough money to buy ourselves out of sin? Can we work really, 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 really hard and not do anything bad and earn our way up to be with Jesus in heaven? Nope. There's absolutely nothing that we can do, but Jesus gives us the gift with his very life so that we don't have to do anything except believe that he already did that for us and accept it. So does that mean we can do whatever we want and live a life hurting people and being unkind? No, we do things that Jesus wants us to do because it makes him happy because we love him, but those aren't things that we need to do to earn our way to be with Jesus. We do them because we love him and he wants us to do them. So if you have ever been in a hub service, we talk about communion, and this is a way of us responding to the good news that Jesus gave for us. So today as a family, hopefully you do communion on a regular basis together, but if you don't, I want you to try it today. This is our activity, is doing communion together as a family, because this is exactly what Jesus is showing us. He brings us food, and he brings us water, and he takes care of us. He sets a table for us. So when you eat that bread, we're doing it in remembrance of him. Not that we're eating Jesus, not that we're drinking his blood, but that we're remembering, one, that he is taking care of us, and that he let his body be broken for us. He did all of the work, and all we have to do is what? Believe. All we have to do is believe. So sit down together, and I want you to, if you have bread, great. If you have grape juice, wonderful. If you don't, 
just take whatever you have around today and sit down together and thank Jesus for the gift that he already gave for you, for all of the work that he has already done just because he loves you and it's completely free and it's such good news. So I am so excited to tell you that good news today and I can't wait for you to share that good news together with your family and spend some time thanking Jesus for everything that he's already done for us. Next week, we get to start Advent, which I'm very excited about, and I can't wait to see you next week. Have a great rest of the week, and I hope to see your faces soon.